G'day folks, Rod from My Water Filter here today. And what we're gonna do is just have a quick look at the differences required for filtering some rainwater versus filtering town and city chlorinated treated water, okay? So my preference is always the rainwater because it uh, hasn't had anything added to it. By that I mean chlorine and chemicals, etc. So, uh, but with rainwater, there is still some treatment required depending on how you're storing your water and what's going on at your home, all right? So rain lands on the roof, into the gutter, and into your tank, okay? So these problems associated with rainwater are generally sediment, and that comes out of any tank, whatever you've got. So a pre-filter is a good idea, okay? A sediment pre-filter, take the lumps and bumps out of the water. This can be outside on the whole home, and then you don't need it under the sink or up on the kitchen bench top at your filter. But if you've got no filtration prior to your home, I would use a pre-filter if I was drawing rainwater into the home. The second stage is basically the bugs have got to be stopped, okay? And uh, heavy metals, lead on the roof, flashings, uh, the water can be a little acidic, so it can be eaten out the copper pipe. So you can have a lot of copper coming in as well. So the ultra pure cartridges, the cold stream cartridges are fantastic for rainwater because they'll uh, remove those heavy metals and the herbicides and the pesticides and block the bugs because they're a ceramic cartridge, okay? So that's normally where we'll go, is with a ceramic for the bugs. Then, if you've got a uh, concrete water tank, well the lime tends to leach out of the walls of the concrete and mix with the water and that'll elevate the uh, acidic rainwater up to a neutral pH around the seven mark. So when water's neutral, it's not eating into the copper pipe on the home or attacking the home appliances, and it's good for you too. So we always want people to be drinking the water higher than seven. So if you've got a uh, concrete tank, you could simply have a pre-filter and a cold stream or an ultra-pure water filter, just, a, just a, a, a twin system like that, you'd say, and you'd be good to go. The concrete is coming, uh, Lime's coming out of the concrete walls and elevating the pH of your water. If you uh, have a other type of water tank, now this could be poly nowadays are used a lot, um, the bolt together steel tanks with a big liner bag inside, basically any other form of water tank except concrete, there's no lime leaching out of the walls. So you've got no interaction, no way to elevate or alter the pH of the water. So at that point of time, it's good to have a third cartridge, all right? And that third cartridge, there's a couple of different ways you can go. Um, we have a pH neutralizer, okay? Basically calcium in the water. So we're neutralizing the water, elevating the pH just up to seven, just so people are drinking neutral water, all right? And then failing that, you can see this filter here, this has got an alkahydrate cartridge in it. So this has got a 10 inch dropping cartridge in here full of all different sorts of minerals. <coughs> this is more likely to elevate the pH of the drinking water up to nine when they're new, slowly come back down, eight, 8.5, and they will fade away over time, but these will give you a much higher uh, pH level than a pH neutralizer, all right? So there's a two styles there. So that's pretty simple for rainwater, and uh, as I say, there's a little bit of heavy metal could have come off your roof, the paint, uh, uh, maybe a bit of copper out of the pipes, herbicides, pesticides blown there in the wind, all right? Not a whole lot of contamination with rainwater. So a great way to go if we treat it right and we get a beautiful product flowing out the tap, all right? Now, government water, town water, city water, starts like this, starts as rainwater. But uh, there's a lot of people living in our cities nowadays and it's obviously a super big challenge for the, the governments and our local shires, etc., to keep the water supplied to everybody's home. Uh, growing population makes it harder every day. So the water being delivered to your home by the government, uh, it is of a reasonable quality, but there's a lot of chemical in it. Obviously they throw that chemical in it so that they can deliver that water to your home and it's not eating out the water pipe systems on the way, okay? So you go to your tap in a capital city or in a country town, generally the water's gonna be between seven and eight and more likely 7.2 to 7.5, something like that pH. It does alter, don't get me wrong, but generally all across Australia, that's what we find is a, uh, that's, a that's a fair range, all right? So government's pumping water, generally with a pH just above seven, 
so that the pipes aren't getting eaten out, okay? They're not gonna pump acidic water through their pipes. It would be craziness, all right? So you're always generally gonna have alkaline water, pH neutral water coming to your home, and uh, that is okay to drink and you're good to go from there. The problem is the chemicals and the extras that are added to the water, and also the associated pipelines that uh, deliver the water to your home. So when you go and get a glass of water out of the tap in the capital city, that water's not just coming from the tank outside or off the roof, you know. It could be coming from 20, 30, 40, 50 miles away. It could have traveled miles through those water pipes. And uh, some of that infrastructure, uh, unfortunately, could be pretty old. And uh, I've got no idea what you could be drinking out of those pipes, all right? So it's always good to have a point of use filter where the water's filtered and the next thing, it just comes out of the filter into your tap, you know, you, you, into your glass, you know you're covered. Same with this one under the sink, you know you're covered. Comes out the filter, straight to the faucet, you're drinking it, way to go. So in the capital cities, for years, people have liked the old twin, all right? So forget everything on the top of this system. This is a reverse osmosis water filter and it has a tank that goes with it. And the reason I've got this here is because this is what I use nowadays, folks, okay? so gone away from the mechanical filtration, still use this on the farm, no problems there with the rainwater, but when I'm at home in the city, we are using reverse osmosis, okay? So to give you a bit of an idea, with this system here, the water's coming in, and it's coming into a sediment cartridge, very similar to this one here, okay? Lumps and bumps, dirt, sediment in city water as well, no doubt about it, so we get the lumps and bumps out. Then this one here, this is the chemical remover, okay? Get the chlorine, and the chemical nasties out, herbicides, pesticides, etc. pretty similar to what this cartridge is doing over here. So these two here are pretty much doing exactly what these two cartridges did here. Now, when the water gets out of this cartridge, if you're in the city, unfortunately, it's not the best it can be, all right? It just isn't, and I'll promise you that. So what we've got on top here now, and to give you an idea, these are five micron cartridges in the bottom here, okay, five micron. This membrane on the top, this filters down to 0.0001 micron. So no virus, anything. This, this membrane here is splitting the water. This water filter does use a bit of water, 50-50 type scenario. So it is using some water down the waistline, but that's all your contamination that you're not drinking, okay? You can use it on the garden, do whatever you wanna do so you're not wasting the water, but it does split the water to use it, uh, to, to create the best water. So once the water goes through the membrane, that's when it's pulling out the fluoride, the pharmaceuticals, the ladies pill, fire retardants, just uh, hormones, all this crazy stuff that we see in stories and news articles on now and test results flying out every now and again of what's been found in our waterways. And unfortunately, water's clear and water always looks beautiful but it's just not the case, okay? It does require a test to, uh, to know what we're consuming. So uh, once the water comes through this uh, membrane, it drips everything out the water, and I mean mineral as well. Now that's been a problem for people um, sometimes. Oh, I don't want a water filter that takes the mineral out. Well, honest truth, I don't either. But I guess where we're at nowadays is you've got the choice. You can use a filter like this in the city and it's gonna leave the mineral in, but it's also leaving all those other nasties I just mentioned a minute ago, okay? Versus this one, take the whole lot out, and then once we've got it all out, we're back to a base product, then we can start again. And we've got a big mineralizer on the back of this product here, add tourmaline and calcium and other good minerals uh, for our health, and also to elevate the pH of the water. So this system here has got an alkalizer on it, and it's gonna deliver water at about uh, nine pH, slowly come back to eight, and slowly fade away over a year or so. And then obviously this on top's the big carbon. It's just to polish the water up, make the water taste beautiful when you drink it. And I promise you, these ROs do create very fine, very tasty water, and uh, they're ideal for the capital cities and, and larger country towns nowadays and uh, we really do recommend them, okay? So uh, have a look, give us a yell if we can help you in any way, give us a question, an email, whatever, and always happy to chat and help you out. So uh, good luck and have a good day.